Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Burgers with Eric podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Burgers with Eric podcast. My name is Stephen James, your host. To my left is the Juicy Lucy, the Big Moose, the Airbnb King of South Florida, Eric Weingart. <laughs> How do you do, baby? What's up, homie? How you doing, man? Happy belated, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. To my right is Big Benji Horowitz, the owner of BSB Consulting here in South Florida. Welcome, Benji. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. What's up, baby? What's up? Chill, my man. Excited. We've been talking about getting Benji on for a while. Hell yeah, dude. It's, yeah. it's been a long aw- time coming. Awesome to finally meet you, brother. I appreciate all of that, man. But it's been a fucking crazy week, man. We'll touch on that a little bit. Uh, we're going to get into Benji's success story. It's amazing what this guy's been able to pull off in the last three years. We have a, little, a couple of hater stories. You know, pre, pre-show, we were talking about some, some hater stuff. And uh, you can leave names and faces out. And I'm sure you got a couple of good stories. And I had one this week as well. You boys are going to the Buffalo Bills, New York Jets. Home opener for the New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers is what I understand. So we're going to touch on that. We're going to do a little bit of weight loss talk. I know that's been a, top, a recurring topic for us. Benji's got an awesome story about that. My fucked up haircut we're going to talk about. And then uh, if we got time, we'll get into some alien stuff. Because I know Benji, <laughs> Benji's deep into that. So, I just want truth about aliens. That's it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and now awesome. we don't know what the truth is anymore. But let's get to that in a second, bro. I want to talk about your history, where you are now, where you're going, how you got here, bro. So Where I came from? Yeah, man. So yeah. what's up? You're, you're from New York? Yeah, originally. Born and raised. What part? Long Island, Nassau County. Nice. Yeah, five towns. That's good. You, you born everyone, everyone listening to the podcast be like, oh, they all know someone from Five Towns. <laughs> we're like yeah. cockroaches down here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Nassau, <laughs> Nassau County. Yeah, Nassau County. We're like an infestation down here. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. It's, it's all, all of New York and the whole Northeast basically moved to South Florida. But where are you Pretty living much. now? You live in- uh, I'm in Northeast Boca. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So we're loving it. You guys neighbors? Dude, he's uh, what are you, literally probably a mile and a half away. Less than, less than that. Oh, yeah, bike, ride, bike ride past your house almost every day. Oh, all right, cool. cool. Now, how did you guys meet? Uh, well, I mean, honestly, we, we, we were staying at a, like the town, a town home in uh, uh, Boynton, Boynton Beach. Beach. Yeah. Oh, okay. And his dad lived there, and I think we just, I don't know, I think Benji was just literally walking by one day, and we just started chatting. Oh, no, I, actually, I think, I think you met Alexis first. Your girlfriend took my cookies. Oh, is, it, is that what happened? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, do it. Okay, I came yeah. up, I said, I just got some cookies. He was sitting outside uh, yeah. this other guy's house, and yeah. I said, anyone want a cookie? And she said, I'll take one of those. Oh, yeah, bullshit. You guys, were, you, you guys were like, you got gold bracelets? <laughs> oh, fuck, I got gold bracelets, too. And I'm not making fun, bro. I, I just got a gold bracelet myself. I chose yeah. to go with the Rolex today for the for the show <laughs> that's uh, that's cool so you guys became fast friends then yeah or? pretty much yeah off. cool and I, like I think it. and that's you know it's kind of touch on that too like dude that's like like let's say let's say you have your hometown buddies right mm-hmm. you know and you've got your hometown buddies listen some of them are lifelong friends but sometimes what what keeps those friendships really is sometimes uh sometimes your personalities and ambitions change so when you meet somebody you know, that's like, oh, hey, I moved here for these specific four or five reasons. Right. You already have yeah. four or five things instantly in common with yeah. one another, same belief systems, goals. So it's, it's pretty easy to hit it off. You're speaking you know? each other's language, dude. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So talk to me, brother. BSB Consultants, um, you know, we kind of got into it pre show a little bit. Now, you help small business owners or small, small medium, medium, large, large? everything. Yeah. Our, our smallest client that we serve has got two employees. Yeah. Our largest. Uh, client with U.S. based employees has uh, about 5,000, but globally 125,000 wow. employees around the world. And what are you doing for them? I set up and established their their benefits, their plan design, structure, you know, financial cost containment, put money back to the organization, give money back to the employees, you know. And I just I just wrapped up a three week, basically they they call it a road show. Yeah. Yeah, traveling all over the U.S., I was on probably 20 different flights. Uh, wow. Actually, ended up sitting next to the CEO of Delta Airlines. It was pretty cool. Get the hell out! Yeah. No way. Were you yeah. on a Delta jet? I, I was on a Delta. I was on a Delta plane. <laughs> that would have been weird. Like, yeah, yeah. You're on a Southwest flight. Like, it, it's what crazy. do you do? I'm the CEO of Delta Airlines. I'm spirit. Well, I'm fucking it's, spirit. It's, right. it's funny. So, so I will we'll detour into that yeah. real quickly. Yeah. So it was. Everybody's on the plane. Everyone's on the plane. They're, they are closing the plane, the jet door, right? Everyone at that point, the cockpit door is closed. No one's going in there. They pull the thing closed. As they're closing the cockpit door, this guy, you know, dressed pretty, pretty casually, looks good though. And 
He knocks, walks into the cockpit, and I'm going, now, now me and my wife always yells at me that I talk to too many people, <laughs> ask too many questions. Yeah. I'm going, something's up with this dude. Yeah, that's weird. They don't let anybody in the cockpit. Yeah. He went in there, the pilots got up out of their seats, they shook, shook his hand, and next thing I know, he comes next to me. First, I was like, all right, I don't sit next to nobody this whole flight. It's fantastic. Yeah. Guy says, excuse me, sits down next to me. I go, oh, excuse me, sir. I just... I gotta ask you a question. <laughs> yeah. Nobody gets to go in the cockpit when the door's closed. I go, you gotta be somebody. He goes, uh, he goes, yeah, they, they work for me. I go, you're not like flight operations yeah. or anything. I mean, you, 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 you know, use your somebody. And he goes, he goes, I'm somebody. I go, well, what are you, the CEO? And he goes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah something, something like that. I go, Dude, I don't believe you. I go, give me a second. I pull up my, my phone. I go, I go on, no, I go right onto LinkedIn. I go, I go, what's your name? He tells me his name. I go, I can't find you, man. I, I he goes, give me your phone. He types in his name. He goes, that's me. I go, oh, snap, you want to see you. I go, oh, I go can, can we connect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah let's, let's chat, bro. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Dude, that would be a it's funny. sick guy. It was right. it was awesome. It was nice. Yeah. We talked for a little bit. We talked about what they do for Delta for benefits and stuff. And oh no shit! Yeah, it was pretty you know, cool. He's always hustling, bro. He's it, always hey, hustling. I was hustling for an angle, you know. A, ABC, baby, always be close. You know. So, but then I finally <laughs> gave up after like twenty minutes into the flight. I was like, right, I'm gonna yeah. go back to doing what I was doing. Was put, he was he chill? Up. Was he cool? He was he, an awesome guy. Yeah, he was just he was real humble. He lives he lives like right here in um, Palm Beach Gardens. He's got a, I think somebody's a house not that far from where we are. Uh, but he travels back and forth to Atlanta every week, I think almost on the same flight, he was saying. so. Yeah, yeah probably flies out of PBI, yeah? Uh, yeah, he yeah, went right out of PBI, yeah, 50, right into Atlanta. 52-minute flight, bro. It's a great flight, yeah. yeah. So pre-show, we were talking about how you know, you've built, been able to build all this in three years. Yeah, three years. Um, after basically losing everything, man. So to kind, kind of take, take us down that path. I mean, uh, it started with COVID. Uh, yeah, and I mean, you were working for another company. Is that yeah, right? I mean, look, like most most people in America today, a lot of people live check to check. You know, sometimes you're living way above your means. Everyone's got credit cards, and you know, just enjoying the finer things in life. And that, you know, that was me, like everybody else. Um, but I knew I had you know stable income from a check coming in, plus you know commissions. And, uh, you know, during COVID, things were going great. I've worked for some of the biggest consulting firms in, in the U.S. and on the globe. And, uh, you know, COVID hit. CEO of the company I was on came on on a Friday and said, hey, company's still doing great. Everybody, we're not letting go of anybody. Open up another credit card. I was yeah. like, oh, this yeah, is go, awesome. I'm go feeling, buy that yeah, house. I'm, feel, I'm feeling pretty good. Monday morning comes. Look, I wasn't part of the first one. Monday morning came. They riffed. Uh, I don't know, maybe a couple thousand employees out of the company. A couple thousand. A couple thousand. Meanwhile, the CEO sitting in his you know mansion yeah. in, in Palm Beach, yeah. uh, with his pool in the background and sitting in his big twenty foot long table, you know, telling everyone in the company, you know, everything's gonna be good. And uh, you know, whatever another month goes by, he did the same video again on a Friday. And uh, it's funny, me and some of my friends were joking, we're like, oh, let's see what happens Monday. Yeah. Monday morning, a bunch man. of us all get these emails that say, hey, you have you know, a 15-minute meeting with, with the uh, manager. I call my friend. I go, did you get the same thing? He goes, yeah. I called none of my friends. Did you get the same thing? He goes, Benji, you're first. I go, oh, I'll let you know what happens. I pop on, and it's me, HR, and this guy. Yeah. Who I didn't like the, the um, hatchet, the hatchet man. Yeah, and they, they said, "Hey, just sorry, man. We're uh, we got a downsize." I said, "I got a six figure deal. I'm closing today. I worked through the weekend. Yeah. Who's who's th who's taking care of that?" They go, "Yeah, it's not your problem anymore. Yeah, we'll, don't worry we'll, about it. We're, we'll take care of that for you." I went, "Really now? Thanks uh, for the free money." Yeah, I said, "Good luck. Good luck to you." And uh, unfortunately, in, in uh, the state of New York, um, which I didn't know, I, I was on a um, I was on what they call uh, a bonus program, not a commission program. And in, the mm. state of, and in the state of New York, if you're let go prior to bonuses being paid, you don't get paid the bonus. Default. It's, like well, spe it's special money it's, versus it's expected money. Versus expected. So in the state of New York, if you're on commissions and you get let go, those monies are due to you. So I contacted a labor attorney and I said I was screwed pretty much. Yeah. Well, that day for me was one of the worst days ever and probably also one of the most humbling and best days of my life because I realized, one, I was so screwed because I had so many bills come and do. Yep. And my wife said, hey, I got you. Let's do this. Do your own thing. 
And I said, wow, that's, that's really scary. That's an amazing woman, dude. Yeah. That's awesome to hear that. About. So she's, I mean, got, I, she's got an extreme faith in you, bro. Yeah. That's yeah. Sick. I mean, she didn't want our, you know, someone else holding our cards, right. Yeah. And, and holding all the chips on our, on our financial well being. Yeah. And, uh, look, I had a, I broke down, you know, yeah. you know, but I was in my, of course. my thirties. I'm a grown man. I, you know, I had a moment. I, I broke down. I cried. I yeah. you know, I looked at my babies, like two small children. And I, I said, Sh- I, I got to put food on the table. I got to be able to send them, you know, to, to their camps. I don't want them to not have. Yeah. It was it was a pretty shocking and humbling moment in my life. That's pretty, that, you know, that's pretty amazing, dude. And I think, I mean, that's exactly how my success journey started, too. You know, you, you get laid off. I had 300 bucks to my name. You know, the woman I was with didn't have any faith in me and bounced. So I was just like, you know what? The epiphany was, I'm, I'm done letting everyone else hold my cards. I know I'm smart enough. I know yeah. I'm good enough. And I know I have the skill set to pull whatever the fuck off that I ever want to do. You know, have, I had no fear in going into that journey because, you know, unlike you, I didn't have anything to fucking lose. Just a 28 year old kid. You had kids and a wife and all that. I had shit, everything so. to lose. That's wild, bro. All right. You, you know what's fascinating about yeah. it to me? Like, so, so I've, I'll give you an example. So I've been doing cryotherapy a lot lately. Are you guys are you familiar with it? Mm-hmm. You basically go in the freezing fucking chamber for <laughs> three and a half minutes, and your your body will literally drop like 40 degrees. Your body temperature. So, so things like that, that kind of stress, or you know the 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 total opposite version too, right? You go into a sauna for 45 minutes and you overheat. It's like, so here's the crazy thing about stress. It's actually benefit, it can be beneficial to you. So like when you're exercising and you're working out, you're stressing your muscles for growth. So it's like cryotherapy is stress and growth. Bodybuilding is stress and growth. So I would argue, right, is that, now that was a lot of stress to take on. Now listen, if your kids die in a horrific accident, I would argue that's disproportionate stress. But something like that, dude, dude, it, it, it's going to do one of two, two things. It's going to break you down and reveal your true colors. I hate to say it, that you're not shit. Or you're going to prove to be a fucking champion and a winner. Yeah. It's going to bring out the best in you. So nobody can tell you nothing, which yeah. I love. Let me ask you something, Benji. When, after that happened, did you find, like after you had your breakdown and all that shit, which is to be expected, did you find that you were thinking more clearly? Like I, I, I was on a, a mission. I mean, that day yeah. when I got let go... I formed my company. That's sick. And the initials of my company, BSB, yeah. are, you know, my father had a company and he, he the company was named after the, the children. And I said, well, you know, that's, you can't have anything better than naming a company after your, your, you know, your kids yeah. or your, and your wife. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my, the first B, my first born daughter, Brielle, and then the S is my wife, Stella, and my son is Brayden, so BSB. It's after my, my wife and kids. Um, and I just Not I, know that. Yeah, so wow, I, that's I, super cool. Yeah, yeah, and I wanted to have I wanted to have something that really meant something to me behind the name when I called people and said, you know, yeah. hey, this is Benjamin Hart, it's BSB Consultants. How you doing? Well, me saying that BSB, yeah. that's me representing my children and my yeah. wife. It's the, it's your self reminder to yeah. why, which is a secret yeah. hiding in plain sight. And I don't take and I don't take cool. no for an answer from people. Well, well, you know, sure, yeah. I, I keep I keep going. All right, so so we formed the company. Yeah. What was the first success? What was the first hit? And, and talk to me about failures prior to getting that first hit. I mean, it sounds like you just kind of hit the ground running. Yeah, well, it's, you know, in the insurance business, it's, 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 it's difficult. It's yeah. hard. You know, it's, there's a lot of trust that has to be gained in, in, this, in this world, in the insurance world. You know, people are trusting you with a lot of money. It's yeah. a bit, one of the biggest financial it ain't exposures. A quick sale. Not a quick It's sale. not quick. It takes time. You know, I had some, some small businesses that gave me their accounts. You know, look couple hundred here, a couple hundred there, $50 here. I mean, I had an account. I still have an account I make $80 a month on, right? But then I have an account where I make $15,000, $20,000 a month on. I love my $80 account the same as I love my $15,000 to $20,000 account. And you know what? I treat everyone exactly the same. The CEO, the CFO, head of HR, executive vice president of benefits. And I treat the janitor that calls me looking for help the same as I treat the CEO of the company. And I get on the phone with the employees in these organizations and I help them and I guide them and I, and I educate them. A lot of times people don't understand the industry and they don't yeah. understand how to navigate. They well, need that it's help. It's confusing and it's so, difficult. Even, so, even for like non-employee, like yeah. on the employee side, bro, it gets fucking wild. Even just on a personal side. 
It's like, what the fuck? Like, you, you literally need a Sherpa. You need a guide yeah. to show you what's what and what's not, bro. So you're, you're providing an extremely valuable service, which is awesome. So. Yeah. Let, me, let me ask you a question. So this is, I think this, this is real value right yeah. here, what, what I'm getting ready to ask, right? Because you always, you want to provide value, right? So I'm sitting here. So you had your, you had your breakdown moment, right? And yeah. listen, dude, there is nothing wrong with that, right? What's wrong is not taking action after it, right? So you break down, humility, crying, sobbing, second guessing, all that stuff, right? You wake up the next day. Let me ask you this. Your next 90 days of life, right? What, what were you, what time were you waking up? What, how how uh, much I, were you working? Like, I, what were you I doing could tell you, day to day? I could tell you exactly what happened. I went to bed Monday night and I woke up on Tuesday and went to work. I went to work. I set up my computer. Right? I had to get my own stuff, which I already had. I mean, I set myself up. I took all their stuff. I put it into a box. I, I mean, I went to the post office. I dropped it in. I went, here you go. And I just took all the training and everything that I had from all the years and experience that I had in sales, and I went right to work. I set up my sales force. I took all my accounts. I loaded everything that I had from all the years into my accounts. I set up marketing tools. I started pounding, pounding the phones. I started calling people. Benjamin Horowitz, BSB Consultants. This is what I do. I can help your business. Nice. Just give me a shot, right? I mean, it was more to that, but I slowly started to get opportunities. But over time, you know, it builds. But in that interim, yeah. I still lost a lot, yeah. you know? And I have no problem saying it. it's public record, right? I had a bankruptcy, right? It was, you had, you had to do something. I couldn't pay these bills that I had coming in. COVID was a terrible thing for everyone in this country and around the world. It was devastating to families. For some people, it was a blessing in disguise. For me, it allowed me to keep the roof over my head, which housed my wife and my children. The banks, they took the cars. Yeah. I literally I watched my cars being dragged off by tow trucks off my front yard. My neighbors, you know, look, you know what? I wasn't embarrassed. I didn't care. You know why I didn't care? I was building a business. Because you knew what you were up to. I was building something. <laughs> Man on fire. I, I didn't care. Love they yeah, I told you. I said, I, said, shit. I said, they could take my cars. I'm going to buy better cars someday. Yeah. That's how I looked take at it. Take those pieces of shit anyway. I didn't like it. Yeah. Take them. But, but dude, what a testament. It's, it's just a testament to the type of people that we are. Right? Okay. And dude, we've talked about this on my success journey, Eric. Okay. You want to take that from me? I'll make you look fucking stupid. You know what I mean? I'm not just going to win. I'm going to fucking bury you. Yeah. And that, that, man, that's sick. That's cool. And that's why, so, and that's why, so when I hear that story, like, and you say bankruptcy, dude, to me, that, like, pulls at my heartstrings because, you know, just so you know, I, I would be embarrassed if that happened to me, right? Because I think I'm, you know, above that. But, right, you know what I'm saying? Like, in terms of, like, ability or success. And then, you know, but you, you know, you took it fucking head on. You didn't let it fucking derail you so th this is my problem with the conversation when you first walked in that we were having is like so when people dude i'm very honest about my net worth i'm not worth 20 million dollars a few million bucks nothing outrageous okay and that sounds like a lot of money to someone that that doesn't have much the three of us know that's actually really not all that much it's, it's it, it, i can't retire i can't stop doing shit today right okay so, but my thing is this, right? So if people knew that, so hearing your story, and what I'm getting at is the people, the, the haters that we were talking about or the people that say, oh, you're full of shit and this and that. Like the reason why I really struggle with that, and I'm not combating these people, is that they don't know that story. You know? No. They don't know you got one similar, I have one similar too, I don't have to go on and on, but like, but that story is why you deserve what you have. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and the their story is why they deserve what they don't have. Exactly, so, or what they do have. You know, um, so because again, man, it's just excuses and hate and fear and all that shit that we talked about. But I want to I want to get into the haters. I want to, and I want to yeah, hear yeah. I want to hear that story again. But we're we're just kind of like in the beginning of okay. your of your success. Yeah. Journey. So the first ninety days, you're pounding it. You're going after it hard, no fear, no embarrassment, fuck I, it. I, I was Wipe. hedging bets also. I was hedging yeah, bets. I was still interviewing with businesses, sure. but in the back of my mind, it was... Yeah, you know you didn't want that. I didn't want it. My wife didn't want it either. She said, you could do this. In, look, 
behind every good man, mm -hmm. or actually not behind, next to every good man is a, is a strong woman. Thousand percent. And 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 I apologize because I shouldn't have let off with behind because my, my wife stands side by side with me in everything yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, and nine times out of ten, she's the one picking me up. You so. gotta be careful. You're gonna get like you sound like too good of a man. You're gonna be getting wow. DMs from all these men. Oh, <laughs> DMs, I, I, DMs from where? I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm Instagram. You can, my wife's on there, and I mean, but uh, he's, he's gonna throw those DMs right in the garbage. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it still it was it was the journey, and a lot of these businesses wanted to know what I could give them, right? And and then they would turn around and tell me, hey, this is what you'll you'll sort of get from us. So I wanted to just continue on my my path and you know I interviewed for for months there were things I turned down and you know there were things I dragged out I was like yeah maybe I'll take it but I just kept pushing it along until you know I was like all right let me close one more deal if I get another thousand a month that'll help me do this you know and if I get another 500 it'll help me do that and slowly but surely you know I started I built up an, a sizable monthly income of uh of money and uh it allowed me to, to try to get back on my feet and, and continue on my path of building building my company. But yeah, it was. So how long was it before, or you know, what was the duration between having your cars repossessed and saying, okay, we're gonna we're gonna be fine. Uh, like like money wise, when you're like, all right, fuck these companies, I'm not gonna. I'm not I mean, the that. banks the banks were the banks were pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like all right, three months in, they're like, you didn't pay, you didn't pay. I actually, you know, it's funny, it's. Like three three months before I got laid off, I went and I got an Escalade, right? And uh, you know, so I took on a thousand dollar a month, you know, payment with that. I, I had you know just gotten, I believe, another, yeah, another Lexus I had just gotten roughly before that. And uh, probably three or four months into it, you know, not paying the bills, the banks were like, what are you doing? You know, are you are you planning on paying the bills or, or are you not? And I was like pay you with what unless the bank lets me go negative and owe them more money yeah, it's just you can't get blood out of a stone right, right. so let's just come get the cars and and uh you know actually i told the banks i said look I'll, I'll work with you just knock on my door i'll give you guys the keys they could like you know human beings they could drive them up onto the thing and what they did like scumbags they came at three four o'clock in the morning and i hear you know screeching you know, basically, like they were sneaking up to tow the cars off my, you know, driveway. Like, no, 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 yeah. take them. <laughs> like, yeah, and, and I was like, you know, and then the banks called me, like, oh, we need the keys to the cars. I was like, yeah, they're still where, where I told you I, I left them because they said they'd come. I put them in the in the in the mailbox. They said, Dude, feel free, take the keys, take the car, like you know, human beings, gentlemen or ladies, whoever's coming to get the car. Nope, they wanted to sneak up by watching on my camera, <laughs> sneak up, throw the throw the thing under, lift it up, and pull off quick. You know. Oh, um, let, me, let me ask you this: So when you when you didn't have your vehicles, uh, so were you in like a suburban neighborhood or is it? Yeah, no, I was in I was in a you know normal. normal so when you got for grocery shopping, did you just order groceries well, or did you go fucking call well, they an Uber? Took, it's funny. They took one car. They took one car, um, and in the in the interim, while they took one car. The other car, I was able to sort of work something out where they, they wouldn't take it for a while. So I had that for a long enough period of time where I then had enough money where I was like, all right, you know what? You want to take it, take it. And then I went and got, you know, something a little bit more economical of a vehicle that I could that I could afford at the time. Um, so I, I was never without a car. But I was definitely driving one that I hadn't been paying for, for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But the bank, you know, they said they were coming to get it. And I, you know, I said, just let me know when, and they let it go months, and they never came. So they eventually showed up. Do you find yourself today, like, obviously you're doing very well financially, but, like, do you find, like, you were talking about being paycheck to paycheck before. Oh, yeah. So yeah. do you find yourself today, like, so, I don't want to say being more conservative, but, like, your monthly expectation of money that you're bringing in versus, like, your monthly obligations, do you try to, do you intentionally try to keep that spread much bigger now? Do you know what I'm saying? Um... I don't know. Or are you just to, like, fuck it. I'm going to keep fucking building this bitch. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm still, yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to think you know, of the best just, way to answer it. Yeah. yeah. I guess keep building a bitch, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to yeah, do, yeah. you know, but yeah. I'm definitely, I'm enjoying life a lot better than I've ever done in my entire life. Um, you know, we went, we went from, you know, a house that was worth, you know, 400 and change, $1,000 got out of it for some decent money you know at the at the height of of the pandemic and you know thank thank god and and thank you know everything that i've done in business you know was able to afford a million plus dollar house here and and you know 
beautiful Boca, sunny Florida, um, and and get you know some of the nicer things you know that I one didn't ever really have, and two now I can afford these things and yeah. I could do nice things and most importantly it's it's about all the things I can do for my children, yeah. right? And it's yeah. wow, I dude, that's fucking wild. To me. So like 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 for me, Benji, I've been like good for probably 14 years now right? i've been yeah. on my own for almost 16 um and we told the story before where you know the first check i got from affiliate marketing was like 4700 bucks and that like that fucking mm-hmm. feeling was crazy but i was 28 you know i wasn't married and have no fucking kids like bro your your feeling of success and what you're seeing now is new is newer to you but you, but but your why is like way fucking beyond what mine is bro, was right it, yeah. it is it is now it's it's my why now but you have that fucking built in which is crazy because i guess what, what i'm trying to get at with this is dude enjoy this because you'll never get it back you can only just maintain and or grow another fucking 10 grand a month isn't going to change your life bro no you no, know what I'm it's saying? not it's not that it's going to change my life i'm just trying to be smarter now about how i do things with my money as i yeah. shared i shared earlier you know investing in properties and and yeah. um you know so i found a way i found a, a company now i'm i'm invested in 25 plus different is um, it a REIT like a REIT sort of deal or? no no it's um it, it's it's i mean it's an awesome company it's called arrived i mean it's just it's an it, it allows the everyday person whether you want to invest a hundred bucks mm. or if you want to invest two hundred ten thousand a hundred thousand you can get your hands onto properties i'm giving them free advertisement but you know it's it's just an awesome organization. I've been able to dump a, a hefty amount of money, and you know, look, it's it's still always a gamble, right? If they say you're going to earn four to seven percent, you know, and if they leverage or change or hedge something where the finances get better in the market and they're able well, to refinance or rates, whatever, rates. you know, you can earn ten to twelve percent back on your money. Yeah. Look, it's better than getting point zero zero one right out of the bank. Oh, God. So, no doubt. Now, now so, it's five. Bob so bro. you know, I'll. <laughs> I'll, I'll take look i'll take my gamble i'll put my money there yeah. you know it's it's investing you know putting as much as you can into the retirement accounts yeah. um uh, brother we'll we'll talk offline about some investment strategy but yeah. uh, it's no longer point zero zero one. Yeah. so steve so it's funny just so you know steve is more conservative and that's pretty fascinating too because i wonder if it's because because of it's just wild you two are totally different which mm-hmm. is fascinating to see different different times of success and different yeah. Um, outlooks financially like Benny's still a little bit of a risk taker you're he's very conservative very conservative yeah uh, which is a different spots bro yeah yeah you know I what I'm that. saying like um, I just I didn't have any investing knowledge I was thinking about it on a fucking drive down here bro. when, when I moved to Florida now, mind you I started I was working on my own for eight years prior to even moving here dude and, I, and you know in Rochester you can't spend 400 grand a year you just can't do it uh, I had like $570,000 just sitting in a fucking checking account, right? With the earning nothing, not invested anywhere. Like I had some small little, you know, financial advisor up in Rochester and all that shit. And it wasn't until I got around like multi, multi-millionaires that kind of shared their investment, investment strategies and their, uh, you know, their contacts in the investing world that I was able to make my play. So, you know, I was, I, my parents are very fiscally conservative. You know, I've taken risks. I've done hard money lending. I've done this, that, and the other thing. Where I am right now is at, because we sold our company. I am in the middle of building up, you know, my 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 business again with a big chunk of money that I got, which is cool because Justin and I just got off the phone with uh, a prospective buyer for all of the sites that I built this year for almost the same amount of money that we sold Nexus offers for. Oh, very cool. Yeah, dude. So we might be like super good here. That was a very preliminary thing. Nobody scoffed at anything. I got to get the numbers together. Point is, all my liquid cash that's parked currently just due to the economic climate is earning me 5%, just sitting there, doing nothing. When I moved down here with 500,000, it was 0.001. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk off camera about that. So annually, what, right? It's, it's APY. Yeah. Okay. So that 500 yeah, K is up 19 2200 bucks a month. S and P's up 19 percent. Correct. Correct. Yeah, the S and P's great too. I just yeah. the market freaks me the fuck out. Why do you be more now? I just don't like them. Because uh, anyway, uh, we okay. So we went from dead ass broke to hustling. Yeah, get, dead getting, ass broke is not so, I mean, it, it was negative. Yeah, <laughs> negative. So so my my question originally here was. 
from that Monday or that Tuesday that you woke up to, okay, we're good. Oh, here, actually, well, I'll, give you, I'll give you something. Actually, no one actually really knows. Yeah. I'll Ooh, share, this I'll, is all we want. I'll share this with you. Here we go. Yeah. My wife, I, maybe she'll be okay with me sharing this, but uh, during the interim while I was building and I didn't have anything, I'm not ashamed that I did it. I did it because I needed, I needed to have some cash. Yeah. I drove Uber. Yeah. I did Uber. Well, well, I, see, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Nothing, Nothing wrong with that. No, but no one, no one really knows. Actually, none of my, no one knows. None of my best friends, no one. I didn't tell anyone. It's none of the business. Yeah. I drove Uber for seven or eight months. Okay. I'd pound out my work throughout the day, and then I'd leave the house for a few hours. Well, Papa, that's what a high-value man is supposed to do. See, I, I look at it differently, right? I look at it like, so you're like, it, it wasn't beneath you. I would argue not doing it shows your, shows your character. Doing it shows yeah. extreme character. Yeah. People, people so, so it's funny, when I got, I, I, I had a, a Lexus, it was a GS350. Yeah. People would be like, I'd show up, pick someone up, be like, damn, this is a nice car. Uh, what are you doing driving Uber? <laughs> Dude, trying to feed my kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Some, some guy got in my car and he goes, he goes, dude, this is the nicest car I've ever been picked up in, in by Uber. He goes, and this is a regular Uber. I didn't even request like Uber, like black, you know, so black car black. service. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that that was too infrequent to get picked. You know, I wasn't getting the job, so I just you know was getting the regular ones. And uh, he literally, he, the guy asked me and he goes, what are you doing? What are you doing doing Uber for? And I said, gotta feed my kids, man. And uh, I don't have a check coming in. So this is what I'm doing with the car I still have before the bank takes it. And the guy started laughing. And he goes, you nuts. I go, dude, that broke. I'm driving a car right now that the bank wants. They just haven't scheduled time to pick it up. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. No, I'm making money you, with dude. it. So you know? And that's something you. actually nobody knows. Yeah. Well, now everybody who will listen to your podcast that's a badge of, Bro, that's a badge of honor. Wear that pride. hundred fucking percent. Wear that pride. hundred percent, dude. So what, what was it? I wasn't what, ashamed by it either. Benji, what was the time frame? So from dead broke to, all right, we're good. Let's move to Florida. What was that time? Oh, I mean, it before I was somewhat. And I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah, I mean, before I was somewhat financially okay. It was, it was. When I say financially okay, I was, I was. Getting, could you getting, take a deep I was breath? By. A deep breath. I never take a deep breath. I mean, that just. That's, I mean, being honest, you know, wife, kids, and now all the additional <laughs> bills. Right. Yeah. It's. I'm never taking a deep breath. Uh, you know, you know, it's. It's. It was about a year and change, right? Um, and then before it was like, all right, well, we got enough coming in now where maybe we could figure out some other alternatives within, within what we want to do with our lives. It's about another year. And, and then it was like, all right, we got, we got a stable client base now. And here, I'll give you some history. Yeah. Benefit brokers, and this is factual, a good benefit broker will get about five clients, decent, yeah. decent clients in a given year. I'm three years in. I have over 90 clients. Wow. Over 90. Oh, that's sick. My market sh- 30 my, a year. He's my market share. 6x, 600% yeah. better than the next broker. My market share is ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. And my client base that goes from New York to California to Hawaii, uh, Texas, Florida, middle of the country, I have international clients that set up operations here. It, my, my market share every and any brokerage house would want it and they do they yeah. do want it i've had i've had organizations that have reached out i could sell my company today and i could walk away with buku millions yeah my wife won't let me no, but don't. no because I, I just don't want to give it up there's going to be many more buku millions as you keep building brother. yeah I, don't, I i like having my business it means something to me yeah i would never just sell it and shut it down i want to build something and uh, I want to compete against those big, big houses. But well, you're well on your way, brother. Yeah. So the, where I was going Congrats. with that was, okay, for, for anybody who's in that position that you were in or I was in where you get laid off unceremoniously, my dad, um, if you've got it in you, you have to abandon the fear of failure. You have to. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine uh, Monday night. You, it doesn't matter. You have to do the work. But it has to be inside you, right? The world has soldiers. The world needs ditch diggers, right? Guys like us are not built for that box. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. So when you say, uh, and I'm just asking you to clarify. When you say oh, yeah. abandoned There's my fear. Uber Drive app. Love it. I still have it in my phone. <laughs> Love it. See, I didn't even know there was an, uh, there, a separate there's one. A, there's an Uber Drive app. 
think I even got five star ratings. Best car ever. I'm not, so when I'm you not ashamed. When you say abandon fear of failure, <laughs> do you mean not actually have the fear or just don't allow the fear to prevent you from yeah. going after it? Yeah, that's why I mean abandon it. We're, you're always going to be scared of the unknown. Okay, yeah, I mean, yeah. you do. Even setting up this, learning how to fucking put this thing together. Yeah, yeah. Like, ah, oh, Jesus, what the fuck? Because I know? like the word f- fearless, right? So it's actually fearless, right? It's not absent of fear. Yeah. Hmm. It's not absent of fear. It's fearless. When I say yeah. abandon your fear, yeah. I mean, leave, leave the fear behind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. okay, it's there. But maybe put it in the back seat of your Uber. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's going to be there, it, but but have the faith, right? Like, so look, success principles are easy. If you have belief that it's possible, which you already knew it was possible because you did it, okay. Yeah. And then belief in yourself, which was in your case fucking phenomenal that your wife backed up that belief in yourself. In fact, I think just listening to the story and just knowing you for the last thirty-seven minutes, I think she believed in you more than you believed in yourself. Am I wrong? Every day, all day. See, that's Every fucking day, that's fucking wild. So so many single men that are between the ages of 20 and 40 that are maybe working a dead-end eight-to-five job making 60 70 thousand dollars a year like you're not a fucking tree like you can you can move you can make moves you just have to have a specific set of knowledge you have to have a specific skill set and again in your case you worked for these huge companies they taught you everything you needed to know that's what you said something that made me laugh my fucking ass off because i did exactly the same thing you did he what, what he was saying was that Tuesday, he woke up, set up, his, set up all the tools that he knew and everything that he learned from, from work. Bro, I did the same thing. I went to school for graphic design. I was in fucking sales. I, can, I know grammar and English, right? And so for internet sales, that's all you need to do. Everything I had done in my life up to the point where I decided to be an online entrepreneur all came together at the same time. The only fucking piece I was missing was learning how to build websites. I sat down for three straight days, didn't fucking sleep, learned HTML to build websites. That, and that, that was how I did it, right? Most people would just collapse. Oh, fucking poor me. My wife's going to divorce me. And they'd let her walk out the fucking door, right? You're not like that, bro. This is fucking tremendous. What a tremendous guy. Yeah. Thank, no, you. I, Thank you for bringing it Oh, up. for sure. You know, and hearing both of what you guys are saying, too, is it's like, a, you know, you have to have a skill, right? So, like, sales... You know, you, you had a, a bunch of skills in there. So it's like, so if you don't develop, I think a lot of times people can't get themselves out of that rut because they really haven't developed many skills, right? So it's like, you have to have a skill set to rely on. So, um, holy shit, whether you know contracting or sales or, you know, HTML, whatever it is, dude, like, like that's the real value in building a skill because you can capitalize on it. And sales is the easiest skill to learn. No because, doubt, because it's an abundant resource, dude. And it, it's an it's an easy thing, but if you don't know how to do it with respect, you will you will fall flat on your face. Correct. But a good sales trainer will teach you how to deliver. Yeah, which is great. But it, dude, and it just blows me away, right? So I kept asking, how long did it take you from dead broke to okay, right? And it took you one fucking year, bro. One yeah. year. Like people don't understand. Look where you are right now. If you are completely dead unhappy with what you're doing and you have a specific knowledge and you have the know-how and the will and the want to, within 12 months, your life will be completely different and you will now be the captain of your own fucking destiny, bro. People don't get it. It's fucking wild. And in three years, bro, 36 months is fucking nothing. Yeah. Like it's I don't, nothing. I, I, I never bragged about what I have. I don't, I don't post about what I have, you know, in terms of, money and I, i've seen look and, and i understand i see one of my friends that i was sh- sharing before we sat down on yeah, this podcast yeah, that's, that's perfect that you know he, he was a waiter at applebee's and during the pandemic he started a business and now he's he's worth probably north of 100 million dollars and this Stop. is this is just Jesus. through the pandemic he just posted he bought an he just bought an airplane you know what for, the uh, fuck honey he said a honey gr- green lamborghini uh, honey uh, honey uh, well. <laughs> you know and, and and he wrote you know he wrote he wrote this awesome story on 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 facebook about his journey and and then he you know he wasn't doing it to be braggadocious he was doing it to show people that yep. He wasn't a tree, and he chose to make a change in his life for the better, mm-hmm. and today he is in such a better position. And, and he says, look, yeah, he's, he's got millions of dollars. He's humble about it, 
But anyone that puts their mind to it and wants to take a chance and challenge themselves, they can have that opportunity. I went from broke, I had nothing, driving Uber, which nobody knew, um, to now having a, you know, a multi-million dollar company. And it feels good to say it, mm -hmm. but again, I worked my ass off yeah. to get it to where it is. And, and, mm -hmm. and for everyone who's listening, I don't work nine to five. I work, I work from 6 to sometimes 11 o'clock at night. So for everyone who thinks, like, hey, you own your own business, you make your own time, you do your own thing, you know what? It, it's, it's much harder. It's not, it's, not, it's not that simple. And we've talked about that before, too, bro. It don't leave you. No. It I, work on, I work weekends. Leave. I work Passive holidays. Passive income is kind of a mirage. It's yeah. kind of, right? Passive income. Yeah. You, you actually know you still have to do it. <laughs> do yeah. things. People are like, oh, you own your own business. That's awesome. You must, you know, you must get to take your vacations and this and that. I'm like, every day's a no, vacation. No, I, he's on the phone, fucking talk, like oh, yeah. servicing his clients. Oh and sure, hundred percent, like, yeah. dude. Of course, yeah. of course, this is what you have yeah, to yeah, do. Like, bro, like Who am I, I, talking said, to? I said this to Justin the other day, right? We we do things people aren't willing to do, so we can live a life that they can't. Yeah. Okay. So this is a perfect segue into the fucking hater statement. Your your man just started a fucking mass company worthless to a hundred million dollars. And when you try to share your story, it, it's, it's incredible. The amount of hate. Well, people hate it on his, on his message and you know, but and then people are like, Hey, this is great. Good for you. Congratulations. Well, those are the ones that are truly his friends. Yeah. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? But that, that, and that. you know what? If I called him right now, yeah. he'd pick up his phone. Guaranteed. Or, we, we were, we were both volunteer firemen back in New York. I was a volunteer firefighter for over 20 years. I was, a, I made it all the way to, to the rank of a deputy chief. Um, he was in the department with me. And, uh, even when I would talk to him and say, Hey, look, I'm going to make it. I'm going to do something in my life someday. I haven't like, I haven't talked to him in years other than communication on Facebook. But if I called him right now, he'd pick up his phone and he did. He, when I started my company, yeah. he picked up when I saw, I saw him on Fox news and I, Stop, I, I called bro. him the next day. I was like, he picked up his phone. He's like, Hey, Benj, what's up, man? I was like, dude, you still got my number in your phone. He's like, yeah. I was like, dude, I saw you on Fox News. He's like, yeah, dude. He's like, I've been on Fox. I've been on CNN. I've been on, on MSNBC. I've been on NBC. I'm like, wow, that's awesome, man. I'm so proud of you. That's fantastic. I'm like, dude, just so you know, like you, I started my own business, and here's what I'm doing. And he's like, Benj, I'd love to give you my business. He's like, but all my employees are all veterans. He's hiring all military veterans, wow. which is so awesome. I'm so, so proud smart. of him. Yep. One, he's given, he's given a lot of these folks a chance at you know, coming back and, and doing something fruitful with their lives. Yeah. And, and two, I mean, he's, he's cutting a lot of costs because he doesn't have to pay for benefits, right? Yeah, they they the have VA their benefits from the VA. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So I was like, dude, that's really smart. He said, Benji, if I ever go in another direction and I start hiring folks that you know, aren't out of the military, he's like, right, sure, I'd use you. So, this, so I think a lot of times age and I was allowing this to happen to me too. Whereas I thought, and everybody thinks they're old. 28 year old thinks they're old. 38 year old. I think thinks he just old. turned 30 by the way. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, <laughs> so when did he, so when did he, so that's kind of what I'm saying, right? He's, and this is for like a value build for like someone who's watching this. So, so he was just a regular Joe. Yeah. A firefighter. Uh, working at Applebee's, right, on, on the side. And what age did he make this monumental leap? 27? In his 20s. 20. And during oh. COVID. During COVID, he started the business. Wow. wow. During COVID, it's, cra it's crazy. But you again, you can't let age get in the way of like your ambition, you know? That doesn't yeah. mean anything. I have, I have clients that are in their low 20s. They have, you know, multi million dollar, $100 million businesses, you know, with 10 employees, and, and you know, they, their, their revenues are in the millions. You just, you gotta, you just gotta take a stab. Just believe yeah. in it. Just do it. And even, and even us, bro, like we're, we're super guilty of just being like, ah, oh, we're good. No, I get that. Yeah, yeah. We, we are, and I have to fight against it. Like, I, I fight against it all the time. Bro, like literally, we need to eat shit. Like I eat shit all year long. Bro. See, but I, I, push I, I don't. You you say you feel like you're good, right? Yeah. I don't. I don't feel like I'm good. I feel like. Yeah, because you feel new. like I just got to challenge myself every day to do more, do better, get that next account, bring yeah. in it. Look, because nothing's a guarantee. Tomorrow's not a guarantee. So I will I, say, a year ago, when I when me and Steve, so I've yeah. known Steve a long time. But we just really <laughs> started hanging out each other for about 20 years. It's fucking nuts. Didn't yeah. it? it's, it's weird. And we're like, wait, you're a Bills fan? Wait, you like business? We're like, wait, you live around the corner? Why the fuck aren't we hanging out all the time? Wait, right? we went to the same college. Wait, we went, We worked at the same company together, yeah, yeah. brother. There's, we worked at Probably the same restaurants together. Eskimo Brothers somewhere. Oh, you know what I'm saying? 100%. 100%. <laughs> and, uh, 
But my point for saying that was, so I will say this. Uh, I would say a year and a half ago, you were a little bit more, I want to, I don't want to say complacent, but more content. Whereas, yeah. but now, now the fire's fucking mm, rock. Relit, you know? Baby. And rock. look, look, six months, bro. Yeah. Six months, we might be getting the so, same amount of money for these six websites than we did for the yeah, whole company. Amazing. That's incredible. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. But we, what we do is a little bit different, bro. Like, you ha- you literally have to eat what you kill, like f- actually fucking kill. Yeah, I have to produce things that others can go kill for me. You understand what I'm saying? That like that's the difference. Like I I am a relationship driven business that I control the tools that I give to the people that sell it, which is completely fucking different. I'm almost on a distribution side where you're on the I got to go fucking hunt, kill, and knock down each prospect that I see. That's yeah. what these people are doing for me. I have an army of affiliates that just sell my shit. I don't. I just pay a bill every week. That's it. Wow. But, but, but I still have to use my mind to figure out how to build it, what I'm going to deliver, how I'm going to monetize the data, how all of this shit connects. So my stress is mental, right? Just like yours is mental, but my work is silent. It's dead fucking silent, bro. That's it. So I had, that's what I was doing when you guys were texting me this morning, dude. I'm working on this job survey thing. Fucking, yeah. you know. Anyway, uh, good seg into how we enjoy our spare time, which is football. And thank God, yesterday oh, cool. was the first NFL preseason game of 2023. I don't even know who won. Did the Love Jets, watching win? Did the Jets win that? Your team played. What happened? I, I honestly, I don't know. Okay, you know, I, I think fan. they. I, I don't. I don't even pay attention to the Hall of Fame game, but I don't even think Rogers played. Like, I don't think. I don't. I didn't even look. I was going to watch no, it, but dude, they I started didn't. that. Uh, Zach Wilson kid. Did they? Yeah, because yeah. I knocked out about 8.30 last night. Yeah, yeah. Done. yeah they, they probably don't want anything to happen with, uh, with yeah, Rodgers sure. before season opener. Sure. Um, but so, so, so talk to me, bro. You've been a Jets fan your whole life? Me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been, uh, been a Jets fan my entire life. Um, actually, no. That, that's a partial, partial lie. Okay. You know, when you're growing up and you see sports on TV and yeah. you're watching uh, the Super Bowl year after year, you, you, you guess you can call you, you, you become like a front runner, right? Mm-hmm. So when I was growing up, it was always the Cowboys and the Bills, yeah. right? It was yep. it was Aikman, yeah, Marino, Thurman Thomas. Uh, yeah. uh, um, was Thurman not yeah, Thurman? Thurman. Yeah. Thurman Thomas? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, uh, well, so you're kind of used Emmett's, to be a Bills Emmett's, fan. Emmett's, oh, I was huge. Jim Kelly. Not no to be way. confused so, with Blair Thomas, but not Blair, Blair but <laughs> Emmett, <laughs> Emmett Smith. I mean, so one year, you know, for a couple of years, I was a massive Bills fan. Then okay. I then I became a Cowboys fan. Then I went back to being a Bills fan. <laughs> bro, you can you can come back. Yeah, well, yeah. The mafia, oh, mafia means family, bro. Yeah. Well, look, and then and then I realized, you know, I, I, I even though the home Jets played in Jersey, hometown. You know, I, I I was like, you know, why I I gotta be a Jets fan, you know, and I and I just I fell into you know just loving the Jets, running into Jets players like locally in the area I lived. I had a, I had the kicker, the kicker for the Jets lived in the same down the same block from me. Which one? Oh God. Um, I don't remember the. Oh, guy's I remember name. you telling me that story. Yeah, actually. I don't yeah, remember yeah. his name, but it, like I, I mean, I have like so. I used to go there with duffel bags of stuff. Oh, nice. And Didn't you meet Eli Manning or something? Was no, he Eli. House? Eli was at one of my friend's weddings. At, oh, okay. uh, not weddings, a party that he just had not that long ago. Um, but he was there. But I, um, I would go there with duffel bags. I remember the the lady's name. Her name was Lotus. She was I, for some reason <laughs> that stuck in my head. Her name was Lotus, and she'd open the door, and they'd be like, oh, God, not you again. And I'd be like, I see all the cars are here. I'd bike over there, and I'd go with my duffel bag, and I'd get all my football signed and the card signed, and I'd go to school the next day, and I'd hand them out like candy to people. would be like, oh, oh I thought I was shit. so cool with all my autograph cards, and I'd give them to everyone. I'd, I, had, I had hundreds of Boomer Sison signed that's cards. Because that's the, the house, the house that, the, that the kicker moved into was one of my friend's houses. They left the country for a couple of years, so they rented it. It was a mansion. Yeah. A big big mansion and um i would see all the fancy cars coming down and they'd sit there like and they'd watch you know when they didn't have a game they would go there and they would watch the games at this guy's house and i knew when i saw like you know well, the, the, 20 the and 20 the, some odd yeah. fancy cars in the yeah. driveway i knew all the players were there i think you should i got a weird take on this you'll probably think i'm fucking wild for saying this but i think no matter what you should always root for your hometown team or home yeah. region team here's why okay Two reasons, okay? So let, let, let's say, for example, you live in San Francisco, and you move to Miami, Florida, mm-hmm. and people go, oh, hey, where are you from? And you go, oh, I'm fucking San Francisco. And you go, oh, you must love the 49ers. You're like, no, I like the fucking New York Giants. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? 
Yeah. Like, like, like oh, I think oh, you should be. Let, 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 let me run with this. Go. You feel me? Yeah, go ahead. Finish this. No, song. no. But to me, it's it's the yeah. same thing. Like I'll this. never it's be like, a Dolphin hey, fan. I'll never root for the Dolphins. Who are you for in the war? Iraq or the United States? Oh, I'm going to you know push for the Iraqis. You know, I think that you see what I'm saying. Like it's like it's tribalism at its best. Fucking root for your hometown, bro. How many dolphin friends do you have? It fucking drives me nuts. What the fuck? You grew up in Greece, New York. Drives me fucking crazy. We live 45 fucking minutes away from Orchard Park, and you're a fan of the Miami Dolphins? The only excuse. What the fuck excuse. is wrong with you? You've never even set foot in the state. Oh, it drives me nuts. What? Oh, oh and, that, and those dolphin fans? We got Super Bowls. Bitch! Those Super Bowls were won in 1970, one, two, and three. You, you, you weren't even a fucking nutsack sperm when they won. You haven't won a fucking playoff game in 23 years. Don't ever talk shit to a Bills fan, especially <laughs> since Joshua Patrick Allen came onto the scene. And by the way, fellas, bombshell. This is Josh Allen's shirt from the 2023 U.S. Open in L.A. I he actually wore it. Wore it right? That's right. 100%. I wore it because I thought he was a Bills fan. It didn't click Did, with did me. you at least wash it? Oh, I sniffed it first. Sniffed it. No, there's yeah, no wash. I, I get a good sniff. And it's been washed. But yeah, there's a lot more than sniffing on it. A lot of sniffing. You know? Look, I, I, respect's got to be given you know, where, where it's due. The guy like Josh Allen's a phenomenal player. Um, look, I'd love to, love to watch the guy play. You know, so He's definitely one of the most fun players. Athletes to watch. He's like a world. big kid too. Yeah, he definitely wow. He's goofy. He seems and he seems like a humble guy. Like he's respectful yeah. of the game. He's respectful of the players. You know you his know. backstory, right? I mean, you know, no Division One yeah. school recruiter. Uh, he I watched the history on, on, a, on how he got it. Yeah, a thousand letters to a thousand D one coaches, dude. And the only teams that gave him an offer were North Dakota State and uh, Wyoming. That's it. Yeah, he's yeah. easy to root for. Look, it's like, it's like a it's like a Kurt Warner story, right? Yeah. Kurt, yeah. Kurt Warner. Yeah. If you watch his history. Look, yeah. people might hate me for saying the name Tom Brady on here, but you look at Tom Brady. Nobody wanted him. He was a scrawny, you know, yeah. nobody. See, isn't that crazy? And, 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 he got an, and he got an opportunity. But so here's the difference, right? So you take a Tom Brady, right? And you, then you take a guy like fucking Baker Mayfield. Okay. Now, now, now. This is this is the. This is why, okay? Tom Brady's workout regimen, the way he took care of his body, his flexibility, the nutrition, the work ethic, the thousands and thousands of fucking reps. Like, hey, why, why? Baker Mayfield is interviewed, and they're like, Baker, why aren't you um, like working with a coach? And he goes, dude, I've been throwing a football since I was three years old. I don't need a coach to teach me how to throw a football. Bro, blew me away it, as soon as i heard that i'm like this guy's gonna be a fucking bust no question just like johnny manzel was a fucking bust same shit these guys get off on their talent through high school peewee high school and in college because their natural god-given talent is years better than anybody else that's on that fucking field until they get to the nfl then they're like i can carry no you can't so somebody like tom brady hate the fucking guy because he tortured Buffalo for 20 fucking years in that division, and he tortured the Jets, and he tortured the Dolphins. He tortured the NFL. Tortured the NFL. <laughs> but, like, come on. But, but, but appearances in 20 most years. Most winning streak, right, as a no. quarterback yeah. against NFL teams. Nobody so. has a better win-loss record than Tom Brady at 30-3 and three all time against the Buffalo Bills. Nobody has a record like that against any other fucking team in the league. Yeah. We hate him especially bad, bro. But... You have to respect it, and for somebody that works and breathes a lifestyle of success and all that shit, you got to tip your hat to the fucking guy. Yeah. I, do you, you know? know about his uh, college? Do you realize what happened to him at Michigan? Do you know? No, I didn't tell you. So, and I might, so I, I remember this from fucking 25 years ago, so I might goof up the story a little, but it's going to be 85% close. So, dude, he was fantastic at Michigan. But Michigan, so I'm just, I think Brady was a sophomore, junior, and then Michigan recruited this guy. His name was Drew Henson. Oh, yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember Drew Henson. He was supposed to be the next, yeah. the next guy, quarterback, but also, I think, a great baseball player, too. Yeah. So he was like one of these guys, oh, this is the next, you know, Derek Jeter, iconic type guy. And I think they just kind of kept put it, giving, trying to put Drew Henson in over Brady. Yeah. And so, like, so what ended up happening is, honestly, if, you know, this Michigan program, if they didn't give this front runner, you know, the opera, like, the so this guy's the front Brady. runner right. you see, versus the guy who's actually doing the better job, but they kept trying to put the front runner ahead of Brady. You know, if that guy never existed, 
and Brady just has his career. Brady doesn't go in the seventh round. No, fuck no. He, he, goes, on, he goes on the first. You see what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's fascinating, and yeah. I wonder like, but you know, but also that that's the same shit that drives Josh Allen is the same shit that drives Tom Brady. And it's no, he's a huge fan of Tom Brady. Joshua Patrick Allen is. So you know, hopefully we see great things out of Josh. This year is a, a fucking question mark because. You know, I got a question where Josh's headspace is this year. Um, when you break up with your high school girlfriend and start dating fucking celebrities and all this shit, I mean, bro, you can imagine the distractions that are going on there. Here's what I think uh, happened. There, I, okay, tell me. So here, listen. But but, but you got you got to admit. That I don't that, know too that, much of his personal life. Here's what I think happened. We're here. I'm not far. He's with his high school girlfriend. Yeah. Okay, he's okay. I don't care if you're rich and famous or not. A lot of times that relationship can fade. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So it faded. I think he got a taste. I think he's actually a very good human. I don't think he's a dog, but I think he, you know, I think he probably went off the deep end for 60 to 90 days, probably took fucking 58 models to Pound Town. But now he's, now he's in a serious relationship again. And so I think he's centered again. But I, so I think he got the demon out. I think I, he got I his. fucking hope so for our Lombardi. <laughs> so. but, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping my Jets will. See the Dude, I'm scared. I'm fucking it's, scared. Of I'm scared as shit of those fuckers. I hate it. I mean, they played us fucking brutal last year. They beat us with Zach Wilson. Ugh. What the fuck? If not for Gabe Davis's ball hitting him and, and hurt Josh, Josh Allen, Allen over, hurt oh, his elbow. Know, that was that. Dude, CJ Mosley is a one man fucking game wrecker. I I can't. I oh my god, this is like one of the best middle linebackers ever. Um, guys, we we got about <clears throat> nine minutes. Before we got to shut this off, I do want to talk about his weight loss journey oh, yeah. a little bit because, guys, the, the whole triangle of success is health, wealth, and relationships, right? So Benji's got two and a half out of the three. Sounds like you're working on that, that uh, the, 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 health, on the health, the health piece, part. Yeah. So, yeah, the wife's so been on me. So talk to us. Yeah, I mean, look, the wife's been on me for years. Uh, look, I do, I do enjoy... A good meal, yeah, like everybody else. Yeah. Um, this, hey, by the way, look, dinner, Benji don't play. No. You go out yeah. to dinner with this motherfucker, right? it's serious. What are we doing? Hey, good. He good. he goes, there's... He, don't, don't take him to the Grove. I've never bro. seen like, someone you, take better control. Have you taken him to the he's Grove? He's like, we're doing this. Uh, have we been to the Grove together? Yeah, we did. Oh, you better... You yeah, better, you took me there. You better bring about two grand. Because <laughs> <laughs> when we go, it's a G. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. If, if like, Benji doesn't play, but go ahead. Sorry to fucking... Bunch yeah, I mean, jobs. look, it's uh, I, I've been on I've been on a journey. I don't know, maybe seven, oh God, maybe now it's eight months, seven months, eight months. I'm down. I've, I've lost about maybe seventy, seventy five pounds. Yeah. Um, it's most most I've ever lost in in probably my life of trying Atkins and this yeah, and that and all work. these crazy diets. Um, you know, I started riding a bicycle again, and mm -hmm. I haven't rode a bicycle since I was in high school. Um, but look, when you go from New York, where you're, you, at least for me, I always felt like I was trapped indoors, right? It, it was either, it was too hot there in the summer, and then during the winter, it was too cold to do anything. And, you know, my kids, you'd last outside for two minutes, they'd go, oh, too cold, you'd see their faces turning bright red, and you'd run in the house. Now here, I mean, I'm, I think as a father, I love it. I love being able to go for bike rides with my wife, my kids. You know, I'm seeing a different side of, of my family, right? And they're seeing a different side of me. I'm more active here. I like being outside. I don't mind, you know, the heat and sweating. I just know when I'm sweating, I'm dropping the water weight, which means I'm still losing weight. Um, in fact, uh, yesterday I ordered, I ordered those sweat things. Those, uh, it's like wearing like garbage bags, right? Yeah. So now when I start bicycling, I'm gonna wear those things and I just want, I'm, I'm hoping I just don't drop dead of a heart attack. Well, well maybe the, don't do it when it's real yeah, feel 118. Yeah, you know, wait till the winter time to do that shit. You know, don't, don't do that right now. I mean, you're obviously doing yeah, you're clearly a ton of riding, you know? Yeah, yeah you know? What, what, else, what else are you doing? Just literally just riding your bike? No, no, I mean, look, there's, I guess you could say there's some, some uh, cheating aspect to it of, um, no. you know, injections, right? So, okay. so the semi, I I got, semi glutide, so semi -glutide yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, look, I, I it's not again, cheating, brother. No, that, yeah, look, so it curbs, it really curbs my appetite. I still, I still don't eat all the right things. If I did, I'd probably be down another 70 pounds. But even my wife said this morning, cause I, I get on the scale every day and she goes, Man. you know, if you just, if you just cut this or cut that out, maybe no. eat more fruit or this and that. No, no, she's wrong. You know, well, Benji, here's why it's not cheating. I just want you to know. So our bodies change, and and 
And my thing is, is my body was really struggling to make any changes. Like yeah, this is crazy. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, like whether I would exercise or lift weights or diet, whatever the fuck it was, nothing was nothing was changing, and I just kept. Yeah. So I would just go into fuck it mode and get more frustrated, eat like shit, and so my body wasn't changing. So I got all my you know blood tests done, dude, and dude, my testosterone was basically the amount a fucking female has. My fucking little dog probably had more fucking testosterone than me. It was so low. So I got on testosterone. I took semi-glutide for a little bit. It kind of fucked me up. It just made me feel a little nauseous after a couple of months, so I got off it. But, yeah. but I just want you to know, it's not cheating. It's not your fault your, your body isn't like regulating it's insulin right It's just a piece of me I can't stuff. control. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and that's what it is. I, I can't control when I'm, when I'm hungry and I want something. I will, I will gorge it. But the semi-glutide keeps me in control. Like, I constantly feel full 24-7, but I will eat. But I get to a point where it's okay. I eat, I maybe eat half a portion or a quarter of the portion, and I feel like I'm slightly nauseous because my body's already telling me I'm full. Yeah, you're full stop. But I stop, and I'm, and I'm fine, and that's, Bro, that's how I feel. We get him to incorporate three days of weights a week. Dude, Dude, you'll shed a weight. Well, that's why I'm trying to do keep doing the bike thing, you know. No, and, no, I'm talking about picking shit up and putting it down for well, one hour. It's better three, for weight loss for one hour, cardio. three days a it's week. Okay. Yeah, nothing, not trying to fuck your head Benji, up, but. Benji, nothing burns more calories than lifting weights, bro. We Do we get you a home workout set and teach you the program? Bro. Just to understand, you, you kill it. And, and I'm, I'm trying to connect, but this was this was last night. This was my, you know, I'm yeah. I'm, I'm looking up the multi workout yeah. sets because I want to set something yeah, up yeah. in my garage. Which still, I mean, if it's 80, 90 degrees, that's fine. You know, I'll sweat while I'm Push pull legs. Come to pure life with me, bro. Yeah. I don't know the gym. The gym atmosphere. I've, I've tried it. I've look. I've, I've been. Ours is so different, dude. Yeah, I've been a part of gyms my whole life. Yeah. I, just I, look. I, I took gym memberships just to say I had a gym membership, right? And and and, 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 <laughs> and they're banking you know, on that. Yeah, I you know. Um, I mean, crap. When I moved down to when I so I went to I went to Lynn University when I moved down to yeah. Boca uh, back in two thousand, I joined. I don't even know if they're in existence. It was like Bally's. I don't even know if they're around anymore. I don't think so. So they had this special that was like $10 a month or something to join. And I was like, oh, it's great. All gung-ho. You know, maybe I'll run here, right? At the end of, you know, at the, end of the day, I'll run to the valleys up the block. I think I maybe went like three times, and then I stopped going. And uh, the bills kept coming. Oh, you know, yeah. and I finally had to pay them off to get out of the contract. What got you, what got you inspired to start the weight loss journey? Um, I want to be around for my kids. Yeah, you know, I want to I want to live a longer life with my wife. Um, one, I, I don't think I ever want to picture my wife with someone else, and I don't think I ever want to picture my children crying over my grave anytime soon. Hundred percent. And that's, I want to walk my my daughter down the aisle. I want some man at some point in life to ask me, because if he doesn't, I'm gonna beat the hell out of him. <laughs> um, you know, and I, and I want to be around. I want to be around to, you know, high five my son when he's like. Dad, look at that! I got that, and I'm like, yo, good for you, kid. All right, like yeah. taking after taking after pops, you know. Um, BSB baby, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, I I, I want to be around for my kids. You know, I, I look at myself now. I'm, I'm 40, yeah. right? My my kids are my kids are five and six. Mathematically, when I when I do the math in my head, there's only so long I can hope to live that I know I'm only going to see my kids at least until they're maybe in their 40s that's if i'm lucky maybe right right if i'm lucky right that's that's a scary thing for me that's reality dude i, had, know? I had my kids at 40. yeah well, they just turned three i had my kids all my friends had kids when they were younger i, 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 I'm, I I'm the only one out of all my friends with with you know Same. five and six year olds so. you know we're going into an era of remarkable medicine though and, and i'm not i'm not guaranteeing anybody you can live longer but with a healthier lifestyle we can talk about the fucking intravenous stem cells oh, down the road. There's people are there is medicine that you, you there's no reason you couldn't live to 105 if you truly get on this um, like immaculate I, I, journey. Like once I start pooping myself, just yeah, put me on, on there. That's it. No, no. But what I'm saying is is, is thrive. Yeah, at these older ages. Yeah, but if I'm that old and uh, and I'm wearing a diaper, just please dig the hole, throw me in. <laughs> and, and guys, that's that's probably <laughs> he's not wrong. But that, that's probably a great great spot to wrap it, bro. We're about an hour three. Yeah. Okay. So, Benji, this was fucking awesome. Bro. Yeah, man. Really Thank nice you. to Thank meet you, you dude. We, you live right around the corner. There's no reason we can't get you on. Yeah. Uh, uh, in fact, why don't, why don't we're going to dinner tomorrow? Why don't you bring you and your wife? Uh, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow. Saturday. 
tomorrow, tomorrow night. I think I have a oh, reservation right. somewhere. Well, we'll get, we'll we'll get it working. We'll back on that one. Okay. We'll get it working, baby. Yeah. Benji, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Burgers with Eric podcast. You can find new episodes on Spotify on Monday and YouTube on Saturday. 